Well, hello everybody and welcome to part two of the anti-piracy mini-series. If you haven't watched the previous video where I showed you how to crack any plugin, even if you have barely any bytecode experience, please do so now, it's gonna help you. And in today's episode, I'll show you how to implement a very advanced anti-piracy such that you will waste months of crackers time. When I implemented this, the crackers were so pissed of not being able to crack it for months on end to the point where they threatened to report me and get me banned on Spigot because what I'm about to show you is actually against quite a lot of rules, especially today on Spigot MC. If you're still selling plugins there, you can move them somewhere else and you'll be, you should be good to go. Anyways, let's crack into it. So in the last episode, I'm showing you basically what most people teach when it comes to anti-piracy. That is, you have a website, for example, mineacademy.org, my website, piracy check, and you simply issue a post request from your plugin to that website and you ask the website to read a bunch of data, for example, user ID right here, some activation code, and then the website will uh, write back into the plugin, hey, is this allowed or is this denied right here? And if it says denied, then you simply stop the plugin. Obviously, this is, uh, this is extremely simple to crack. All that somebody has to do is to change this here, denied, or just comment out and prevent this by using bytecode editing. Or even worse, they can just connect to their own website and then they can do whatever uh, they wish. So how do you actually make this uncrackable? So when you have your Java Minecraft plugin, it has the on enable method and it has a bunch of stuff in it. Register commands, register listeners, uh, start time tasks, etc. load settings, right? What you could do is to move a couple of these loading steps onto the server and then the server would actually return code back here that you would execute on Java and that code would keep the plugin from loading. So essentially, let me just show this to you again in a different way so that people understand. If you have the main plugin class, for me it says on reloadable start because I'm using my own uh, enchanted plugin making system called Foundation, which is just a library to, to help me make plugins faster. And by the way, it's open source. Uh, I'll leave a link to it because I'll reference it a little bit. So this is the on enable method and say that I have this code right here. Ignore, mail, me, and these register commands, right? You, what I suggest you do, you delete this, you paste it on your, your website, and then, excuse me, this code, the response, is actually going to be the code that will run it. So how can you do this? I know it sounds crazy, and if, you, if you've never heard about this before, how can you do it? Well, there is something called JavaScript, and there's something called Project Nashorn. It was developed for Java 8, and I know since I think Java 15, this is no longer shipped in the default Java installation, but I'm gonna show you a way how to get it. You can just Google Project Nashorn tutorial, there's a bunch of great tutorials for free out there on how to manipulate this. And my library has a JavaScript executor method. So what you could do, instead of getting the response like this, you can just read the response, say that the, the response is now Java, JavaScript code, and just call JavaScript executor.run. Again, I'll leave a link to this library on GitHub, and you'll see that it uses something called script engine from Java X script. And then down below, you can see that we are loading the script through a couple of ways because, you know, different operating systems just need it a different way. Again, feel free to study it on GitHub. Um, by the way, I do have a full course on anti-piracy where I'm going to show this to step by step. But the reason that I'm showing this only high level is that I want people to understand high level of it and come up with their own unique setup. Because if I give you the specifics, then obviously the crackers will be able to bypass and patch it way quickly. Plus, second reason, it's quite easy to get stuck. There's just so many moving parts. And in my course, I can give you that personalized help. We are doing live calls and everything where you can come share your screen and it's just a better experience because I can help you if you work with me. And I just don't want people to be like stuck on the details everywhere. That's why I just suggest that you Google parts of this. So, you know, if you learn a little bit about JavaScript and Project Nashorn, you'll be able to create a JavaScript code that roughly, 
roughly exactly does the same thing. So the actually the remote code will execute um, the part of the plugin. Now, what is, what is the challenge with this? Well, the cracker can just listen to the response, right? So somebody can just position themselves as a middleman. The cracker is right here. They can just listen to the response and then cut the connection and then just hard code the response right here. And that's a great observation that we had from one of our students asking this. Well, how can you miti mitigate this? Well, you can make the, the response unique per buyer. Remember when we were posting to our website and checking for anti-piracy, we posted the user ID right here and we posted the serial, serial key. Well, you can actually obfuscate encrypt this with AES and salt and then the salt can be the user ID and you will give this code that is encrypted to every single buyer individually and then the response on the server is going to basically just pair this with an external database and then just return a response that is also encrypted with the same salt and that way even if the pirates somehow cut the connection, they will still be able just to receive, uh, just to catch and hard code the response that already contains the dig digital footprint for their user ID. So you'll be able to simply track the leaker way easier. You'll know who leaked it because every single plugin is going to contain that blueprint and it's going to be extremely hard, close to impossible to get rid of that since it's salted and it's encrypted. Another thing that I messed with and I got great success with to the point where the crackers were just so pissed they wanted to report me is silent end appearances. This is like next level stuff. This basically means that you return JavaScript code that will apparently load the plugin so nothing will break and the cracker will be like yeah i cracked the plugin however after one two three hours there is going to be some weird glitch for example let's say that i have the sync cache right the sync cache has a bunch of methods let's say that the vanished is always going to be saying that the player is vanished and then the plugin will still work and it will appear as though i made a code issue and then people will open up, you know, ticket on GitHub and share me the issue or share me the fake error stack trace claiming that it's simply a coding mistake, but I know that it's not. And I know that they're using a cracked version and I can just, you know, ban them and reject helping them. This is something that I actually used with great success because only you as the plugin author know where the mistake is lied. So for example, one thing you could do is you can just have a new bucket renable that is supposed to be canceled, but the code, if it fails, it doesn't cancel it. And then this bucket renable after two hours, it will just set any variable to null or it's going to corrupt some part of the plugin, making it not completely broken, but you know, you get the point. And again, I don't really want to give you any specifics because if I give you, this is the moment where the specific method will stop working because the crackers are probably going to watch this video. Great. Another thing, bytecode corruption, guys, very dangerous territory. So if you Google how to manipulate files in Java, I'm pretty sure that you're going to come across uh, some responses dealing with input and output streams. And there is something called a buffer, right? So if you're trying to copy what, what you could do is the response on the external server could just return a method. Uh, a method call in your plugin and if you and if that is read the method call will simply copy the jar to rename it delete the original jar and then rename the new jar back into the original name so that it looks like nothing happened but really when it's going to copy it instead of copying the full size it'll simply copy 4009 95 instead of 96 and this is going to corrupt the entire jar and you know the crackers will be unable to see what's wrong because the jar will not be able to be even opened in a bytecode editing i don't think that bytecode editing will even work that way because you'll just corrupt the entire file and it's very very sneaky i personally don't recommend it because if something goes wrong you'll just piss your customers off right if somebody legitimately just ends up you know <laughs> triggering this you'll basically corrupt the entire file and this can cause a lot of frustration among legitimate buyers, but it is an option. I just personally don't recommend it because there are uh, security implications with this. Lastly, what I want to leave you with is something called Native C. 
So very few people know that Java can actually run uh, C methods that you can compile and write in the C language. And obviously 99% of the kid hackers, hackers, they will not be able to crack it because C, cracking C is just way harder and the architecture is just fundamentally different from that of Java. So most people just never bother to learn it. And personally, again, that's something that you have to study on your, on your own. I don't teach this in Project Orion and I'll explain why in a second. However, if you decide to go that route, it is, very, it is very unlikely that someone will be able to crack it. Also, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna actually give you one example because you know I've mentioned this in my online course too, so I guess that it's leaked anyways. There is, say, 2,900 or something emojis right here, okay? And basically, when the plugin starts, I simply print out a couple of messages like welcome to chat control, right? And there will be an emoji. So this emoji, you can actually uh, pair the response from your remote server and return a unique emoji for every single buyer. Because I highly doubt that you, you will get 3000 buyers that quickly. It's probably gonna take you a very long time until you get there, let's be honest. And after, after you get there, you can just switch the method to something else. This is very, very effective because crackers will have no idea that the cracker number one has this emoji. You can see the code. It even, you know, doesn't want to parse it. Uh, it doesn't want to show an IntelliJ, but it shows in the console, I believe. And another cracker, instead of seeing this emoji, sees this emoji or that emoji. It's very, very unlikely that someone will notice. However, you can then see, download the crack plugin from the leaker side, right? And then you can just see at the emoji, pair it with the database, and there you have it. You know exactly uh, who leaked it. However, now that I told this, this method will become obsolete because I, you know, people are gonna know. So just get creative with this. That's why I'm, I'm very like careful giving you any specifics because the moment that I'm gonna give you, they will lose their meaning. So be very creative with this. And honestly, guys, let me just leave you with this message. I think a lot of the anti-piracy is just a waste of time. People try to stop it, not understanding that you can't really stop your code being cracked and looked at. But the whole point of anti-piracy is just to waste time of the crackers, making it unviable, right? And I would suggest just don't bother with it too much. Maybe if you truly have a unique use case, and you truly want to, you know, stop people from you know, doing something that you don't want to, just use Pro ProGuard. Let me just type it in. ProGuard is a simple free obfuscator that'll simply make it almost impossible to somebody steal your idea if you think it's that good. Uh, also, don't be arrogant. People are so arrogant thinking that their special ideas are so good worth stealing. Uh, honestly, I stopped obfuscating my plugins and I deleted every single anti-piracy that I ever made for my plugins three years ago. And the sales actually did not go down, they actually stayed roughly the same, even went up slightly. So I personally don't use it, I think it's a gigantic waste of time, unless you are an enterprise Java developer, then probably, yes, you might have a use case for it. If you're just making Java plugins, don't waste your time. Your life and your time and your energy on planet Earth is very, very limited. And if you're gonna spend it here, you can't spend it on making your plugins better. If you are an, an independent creator and you are making everything by yourself, you're a one man show, honestly, don't bother. Focus on making the plugin better. Focus on delivering features. Focus on speaking with your customers, making sure that your people are happy, making sure that the plugin works, eliminating bugs, and just improving your coding skills. That is all that, is all that matters, not implementing some goddamn anti-piracy and fighting with some 15 years, 15 years old cracker uh, and then trying to, you know, play the catch mouse game forever. Anyways, guys, that's all for me for today. If you want to learn more about Minecraft plugin development, check out my online course, Project Orion. It is a full seven week course, including mini games, how to build Skyblock, Egg Wars, and a lot of cool stuff like that. And it even has a full Java uh, anti-piracy masterclass where I'm going to give you the PHP scripts that I didn't show this in, in this video because I think it's you know, pretty uh, pretty private stuff and I don't feel comf comfortable sharing like what I have on my endpoint in here, but I'm actually going to give it to you there. And what's more, I can help you personally because twice a week, you don't just watch the videos, but you also can join live calls and you can share your screen so that I can help you and I can get you unblocked and I can actually review your code. And I think that that one feature there is worth the entire 
course because sometimes we have people who've been stuck on something for weeks and they come on there come on a live call share your code share their code within half an hour we get them unblocked all right guys that's it and i hope that you enjoyed enjoy this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give it a nice thumbs up okay don't be a stranger and i'll see you next time thank you